Hey everyone, this is Dr. Corey Glenn. I'm going to be demonstrating today the new Blue Sky Bio Fully Guided Kit. Now if you've used their products in the past, you know that to this point we've been doing the single cut drills, which are awesome and they're extremely cost effective. The only thing was that you couldn't guide the implant uh, on, a, on a fully guided carrier all the way through the stent. And so this new fully guided kit is going to enable us to do that and it actually gives us a lot more flexibility in the drilling protocol. And so, <clears throat> just for demonstration purposes in this case, we'll be doing a full arch um, type case. And this is one where bone reduction, we'll assume bone reduction has already been done here. The way you can work this, um, and when I made this in the Blue Sky software, everything gets pre-programmed for you as far as where the drill sleeves need to be. So this was printed out with the uh, uh, drill holes where they needed to be. And to do the pins, I'm going to just go in and I will go until I sink up against that ring. We'll come and do the second one. And that's it. So that's the placement of the pins. You will follow up now and actually put the pins and press them into place until they bottom out. And now you can see this stent is stabilized in the mouth. Everything is going to be seated completely all the way around. <clears throat> and you'll also notice that I did not perforate on the lingual area, which is very important because we never want to send a burr unguided into the floor of the mouth. And so at this point, we're ready to place on the drilling guide on top. This one is just affixed with some little pins. Um, and I like the idea of not rigidly fixing this in because it, it would be nice to be able to just pop this on and off very quickly to inspect your osteotomies, uh, clear out debris, all of that kind of thing. So now we're ready to do the drilling and the first thing you'll notice is I actually don't have any metal sleeves in this. And I'll show you the guided kit now and why I'm allowed to do that. Now this is not the actual case for this. Uh, I actually have the first one of these available in the world and we don't even have the boxes ready. So. For right now, <clears throat> this is just a, another company's box, but as you can see here, we've got, um, we've got the ability to increase in diameter, we've got the ability to just increase in length, or any mixture thereof. We can go uh, with a pilot drill at 6 millimeters here, and as you can see, the pilot drills actually have a cutting tip on them. Oh, dropped it. The pilot drills have a cutting tip on them, and one of the reasons that that's helpful is because if you ever try drilling in a sloped ridge you know that the drills want to walk and it will press you against your guide tube and so in this case what you'll do is you'll go in with the initial six millimeter pilot drill you can sink it to depth I've already actually done this one osteotomy you can sink this to depth and that's going to give you a nice flat spot where you can um, uh, use your subsequent drills without them walking now, you can use these with a metal guide tube, uh, at least all the other drills, but if you're going to use this initial pilot, I would probably suggest using a metal guide tube because if you're using it against resin, these have a cutting side on them, and so there's the possibility you could get resin shavings in here, uh, which obviously you want to avoid. So in that case, it would be better off to start with one of the next drills. Now, these are how all the, uh, the subsequent drills are shaped. There's a, uh, a built-in key, and a lead-in portion on that key. And so with these, since it's just a smooth surface engaging, you can put this in and it's not going to generate any shavings within that osteotomy. And so um, a typical, uh, typical size for a guide tube is about 0.1 greater than uh, the actual shank here, which in these uh, drills, this is a 4.95 diameter built-in key. And so in my uh, demonstration here, I've actually built these as 5.05 for the inner diameter of this. Um, with it being direct resin to resin, I think I could actually even go a little bit um, uh, smaller in diameter, maybe just have a 0.5 uh, inner diameter, because you can see I have a tiny bit of wobble. Um, but for demonstration purposes, that's not a big deal here. So let's just go through a few of the drills and show you how this process would work. Again, I've stacked my guide back on. We'll take this off, and I will start again. I'm going to skip the the pilot because, being that it's a resin guide, I don't want to create any shavings. So I'm going to just go from site to site with the very first six millimeter length and 2.5 millimeter diameter drill.
and as you can see the offset has been set in the in the software such that I'm going to bottom out at the proper position so if we're placing a six millimeter implant in only a three millimeter diameter essentially we would be done at this point now we're not going to do that we're going to plan these uh, this was planned for 4.3 implants and so what I could do now is I started here with the 2.5 by 6 millimeter drill I could now go up to a 3.0 by 6 millimeter drill or I could go up to a 2.5 by 8 millimeter drill let's do that this is going to be planned for a 10 millimeter length so tons of flexibility here in, in the direction you go so I'm going now and I'm basically just going another 2 millimeters deep beyond that six all right and we could take this off very simply I don't generally blow the the shavings out of the patient's mouth like that but one of the nice things about working on your desk is you can do that and so now let's go to the 2.5 by 10. That will get us to our final length for the implants that we'll be placing here. And you can see I'm not generating any shavings on my guide, despite the fact that I have no metal stop because it's just engaging this smooth surface. There's nothing here to eat it up. I suppose with extended um, contact and lots of uh, friction, you could generate some heat and distort that. Uh, but if you've got irrigation going, very unlikely that that would happen. Okay, so we've gone up to 10 millimeters in length. Again, I didn't use the, uh, the pallet just because it's cutting and I don't have a guide sleeve. So we're up to 10 millimeters. This is our final drill that we need to get to. And so at this point, we can come over here. We'll get the 3.0 drill. Length has already been established, so this is just the 3.0 by 10. And so now, all that's happening is I'm widening the osteotomy. I'm not going any deeper. All right. Now we could have just as easily started at this six, and we could have continued up in diameter at the six millimeter length and then come up in length. Uh, the cam log system, if you've ever used that, that's how it does it. But one of the things that's so nice about this kit is that we do have the flexibility to go diagonally, uh, up in length, up in diameter. It's totally flexible as far as that's concerned. So here's our final diameter drill. And again, this is matched to a 4.3 by 10 millimeter implant. Dentistry would be so much easier, and we could charge so much less if patients had removable jaws. But to this point, we do not have that option. All right, can pop that off now. And we can see all five completed osteotomies in this case. So, <clears throat> the last thing that has to be done is the implants need to be placed. Now the implants have a guided carrier, and so this is the guided carrier. You could use this with just a square latch, and you see it says 8.5. This carrier is for the 8.5 um, offset, and so there's going to be variable um, carriers, so if you needed a greater offset, you could certainly set that, but you want to set your offset in the software to match whatever this carrier is. So in this case, again, everything is pre-planned so that just like the tubes bottomed out on the guide, the implant is going to bottom out on the guide. Now onto the carrier, we can insert a thumb wheel. And this carrier is reusable. You'll be able to use this in multiple cases. And so now we can come in and we can use a 4.3 by 10 millimeter implant. If you notice right there on the tip, there's a little bit of a polymer. 
and that polymer is what gives retention. So when that snaps on, it's very stable. I can shake that up and down. It's not coming off, but once I put a little reverse pressure on it, it'll pop apart. And so no having to worry about disengaging screws or anything like that. You'll have your implant in the package sterile here, and you'll just stick the carrier in and engage it and pull it right out of the package in this manner. Okay? So we'll put it into one of these osteotomies. The implant will go straight through. And again, the same outer diameter on the keyed portion here is what's going to engage the inside of the tube. Now that got fairly tight pretty quick and so I'm going to use the torque wrench now to place this the remainder of the way. And so I could either uh, use one that goes over the top of this or you could use one that just directly engages the latch there. It doesn't matter. And again, we're just going to bury this until the carrier bottoms out on the guide. Now, when you're doing an actual surgery, it's important that when you bottom out on that guide, you need to stop at that point. You can see here, I lack a couple millimeters. And I should feel that stop and gauge. Boom, about right there. Now, what happens, a lot of people think that they can control the timing in a fully guided surgery. And to a degree you can, but what happens now if I continue? Let's say that I was not entirely lined up where I need to be uh, with this. What happens if I continue cranking this on? Well, there's only two things that can happen. I'm either going to strip the bone in my osteotomy and sacrifice primary stability, or I'm going to press this guide deeper and deeper down and distort the guide. In either case, I'm giving up some of the accuracy. So if you need to control the timing, you're far better off at this point to take this off and then just engage a normal, um, uh, non-engaging driver into this. Stick it in there, and maybe you have a mark right here on the guide, and turn it till there's you know a flat side lining up to that. That's going to control timing, and you'll have a slight variance in up and down um, accuracy, but it's not going to end up stripping the bone like you're prone to do if you uh, keep uh, pressing like I was doing just then. So I'm not going to place all these implants, but you can see that's exactly where I planned it. That's about a millimeter and a half subcrestal. Our guide is nice and stable. At any point, we could take that off. And once the case is done, we'll have five implants in the mandible exactly where they need to be. So I hope you found that helpful.